The models that tie things together include activity diagrams, which are visual depictions of use cases and user stories that really just show you all of the activities a user takes in a visual format. Affinity diagrams, they are a means to organize literally any kind of information into categories and subcategories. They can be used to identify missing information by looking within the categories. Sequence diagrams are models that show how process flows operate with one another and the timing order in which they do so. These are one of my least favorite models in that they are really hard to read and therefore they just confuse our business users. Requirements categories. These are functional buckets to group your requirements into and to provide a method to organize your project into. Traceability matrices are used to map requirements to other objects like process flows and business objectives. The models with icons will be discussed in more detail in later sections. Affinity diagrams are used to organize large quantities of information. You create categories and move your pieces of information around between these categories. For example, you could use them in brainstorming to identify features in your system. When working with affinity diagrams, use Miller's magic number, the 7 plus or minus 2 concept, where we only want to have between 7 plus or minus 2 items in a category, so it's something the mind can process. If you're listing features for your system and one category has 12 items in it, then consider breaking that into two categories and looking to see if those more detailed categories trigger you to identify more features. A whiteboard is a particularly useful tool for these. I like to create each of my items on sticky notes, writing categories on the board, and then moving stickies around between the categories. You might use them if you have a spreadsheet of info as well, where you start to put categories on each of the items. For example, you have a list of 30 process flows, and so you work with your users to put a category on each process flow, getting down to about five top-level categories of flows. To do it in Excel is easy, just add a column for the categories and fill them in consistently. In this example on the left, we have a list of process flows related to ordering a car online. Then we added a column to capture the category of process flow. And in this case, we use department names for those groups so they can quickly identify which ones they each own. On the right, we had a whiteboarded list of use cases related to ordering a car, and similar to that Excel file, we just labeled in a different color a category next to each use case name. 